Resistance. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to Sniper Elite 5 in depth, where today we are taking a look at the Stenmark 2, and then we'll be going over a couple of custom class setups I have made for it. So without further ado, let's get into this. The Sten was conceived by two British designers, Reginald Shepard and Harold Turpin, as a cheap, easily manufactured weapon after the disaster at Dunkirk in 1940. With all their equipment in France, the British realised that the imminent German invasion would be a bloodbath without a weapon like the Sten, as currently the only two submachine guns in British service, the Thompson M1928 and the Lanchester, which was a copy of the MP28, were too slow to produce to make much of a difference. The Sten Mark I arrived in 1942, complete with flash hider, folding foregrip and wooden furniture, all of which were promptly thrown out for the Sten Mark II, seen in game. The Sten Mark III, seen in Sniper Elite 3, was developed and manufactured concurrently to the Sten Mark II by the Lines Brothers, who are otherwise famous for manufacturing Triang Hornby model trains and Scalectrix model cars. The Mark IV was a prototype which was comparable in size to a pistol and never saw mass production. The Mark V was introduced in 1944, and with the war drawing towards an Allied victory, was lavishly equipped with walnut furniture. Two silenced models, the Mark IIS and the Mark VI, were also made. The Sten was more reliable than its reputation suggests, although much like the MP40, which is looked on a lot more favourably by history, its double-stack, single-feed magazine caused issues, and the weapon could easily be accidentally discharged if the bolt was knocked or if the weapon was dropped. Despite these issues, however, the Sten was used as a basis for the design of the American grease gun and was copied by the Germans when they made the MP3008. More than 3 million were made, 2 million of which were Sten Mark IIs, and it was replaced in British service in the 1960s by the Sterling. In-game, the Sten is a very interesting weapon. It has a lot of great statistics, with the best aim stability in its class, which is especially useful because it can also be equipped with a scope, a thing only shared with the MP44. It also has low vertical recoil, and great all-round handling times. To top it off, the Sten is one of the quietest submachine guns in the game, beaten only by the grease gun and the silenced EMP. And it also has a great variety of attachments, with multiple magazines, stocks, muzzle attachments and scopes being offered. However, the Sten has some fairly noticeable downsides, chief among which being the poor power, with effective range, muzzle velocity and damage and rate of fire all being very poor indeed. The weapon's reload speed and spread accuracy are also very poor. The Sten is best when it's being used as a utility weapon. If you want to deal tons of damage and lay down a lot of fire, other weapons like the PPSH or the Thompson are your best bet. But the Sten works well in other capacities. It's an excellent weapon to run silenced. A Sten with the Mark IIS suppressor is comparable in audible range to an EMP, and if you don't have the EMP, then the Sten is 100% the best submachine gun for stealth gameplay. The Sten also has a delightful statistic of the best aim stability at 14 centimeters by default, which is leagues better than the competition, with the MP40 and the grease gun being the next best options at 17 centimeters, which comparatively is like trying to aim while standing on a trampoline during an earthquake. To utilize this low aim stability, the Sten can mount both the PU scope and also the night vision scope, which adds no end of utility to this gun. The MP44 may be better at range, but the MP44 also has 27 centimeters of aim stability, which is so much I don't think there's a simile I can use to describe it. What I'm saying is the MP44 has to be extensively modified to work with a scope, whereas the Sten, with its lower recoil and better stability, gives you scope usage on a plate, at the cost of not being able to easily hit 300 meter plus shots where you should be using a rifle. 
The Sten's Iron Sights are also great, and that makes it a capable weapon, providing you're happy to put 7 to 10 odd rounds into your target to kill them. Now I want to go through two custom setups I have prepared for the Sten, the first of which being a setup designed to make the weapon as accurate as possible. I take Iron Sights, although a PU scope would also be totally viable, as the accuracy on this thing would reward scope usage a lot but I didn't use one as this thing has pretty bad muzzle velocity. I take precision rifling to improve my spread accuracy and a cuts compensator to reduce recoil. The lightweight small magazine and lightweight X2 stock help improve my accuracy further. And then finally I use a heavy bolt to reduce recoil. And it also helps me make sure that every bullet in my now very small magazines get put to good use. There's a lot of room to play with this setup. You could add a foregrip and move around some of the accuracy scores a bit, or take the default magazine, or use precision machined instead of heavy bolt for your receiver. But with my setup at least, you'll definitely hit what you're aiming at. This setup works great shoulder aimed because the 30cm spread accuracy and low rate of fire make it so you can keep up great accuracy even during prolonged periods of fire. We also have an absolutely sensational 6cm aim stability, which is insane, especially when coupled with the 6cm horizontal and 5cm vertical recoil, meaning that you don't even have to think in order to hit your target. The one problem is reloading, which is very slow and very, very frequent, but I think the advantages definitely outweigh the downsides. My second setup is a stealth build which makes use of the PU scope. I also take the lightened and stripped barrel to improve aim stability, the Mark II S suppressor because it's the quietest, the overpressure magazine to boost damage but more crucially muzzle velocity, the lightweight X2 stock because it's fantastic, the lightweight Irma 36 grip to improve accuracy, and then the reinforced overpressure receiver to further boost damage and muzzle velocity. This is by no means a long range build, despite what the scope might trick you into thinking, because the muzzle velocity is appalling. But it's only appalling at face value. You've got to remember that this thing is doing 45 damage and shooting at 360 meters a second with the Mark II S suppressor, which is famous for absolutely destroying all semblance of lethality on any gun you attach it to. To put it into perspective, we're looking at Thompson damage and better muzzle velocity than the base Sten, all with a 34 meter audible range. The aim stability has also been further reduced, and despite two overpressure components, recoil is more or less the same as it is on the base model. This setup works excellently at headshots on isolated troops, or for taking out pairs of soldiers quickly and quietly, or, much like the stealth Thompson from last episode, limiting the size of any given firefight, because this thing is more lethal and quieter than its default counterpart, which means if things do go awry, you can quickly dip out of any conflict by rapidly silencing the few who are onto you. It emphasises the Sten's key strengths, utility and modularity. It's lethal, quiet and scoped. What more could you want? Thank you everyone for watching the video. Remember to like, subscribe and comment. It costs you nothing and it's a great way to help out the channel. Stay safe and goodbye.